yes. It's that time. It's that time again. Distorted Reality Podcast. We're Distorted Nation Radio. Beats Reality Check TV. With your hosts, Secor from Distorted Nation Radio and Shell Razor from Reality Check TV. With your Kevlar coated comments, it's time to distort your reality. It's a special, somber podcast. Um, there is no number for this podcast, Corey. It's going to be um, Podcast J, okay? I was going to do X, but I'm going to do J for Jimmy Z. It's a it, special remembrance show. Yeah, it's a It's special. not our normal antics or anything like the average that we Yeah, do. there's no mixing in our shenanigans with this. We're, you no know, personal stories, no nothing like what's been going on in our lives or nothing like that. Except nope. for the fact that the biggest thing that's happened in the Sacramento community is it lost uh, one of its members. Um, we so did one of the lead singers for D1, um, Jimmy Z. McGuire. Diversity um, of one. Diversity of one. Uh, we lost Jimmy Z on Easter um, afternoon. I don't have an exact time, and it's really... That's when it was noticed that yeah, he was... Th- that's when it's noticed when he uh, left us and he went to a better place. And um, we're all kind of in shock. Um, this episode's dedicated to Jimmy Z's family and his children and um, especially Little Juicy. You know, we, we named him that. Um, we're getting we're gonna get text messages through here, so don't just mind the regular with us. just bear with that. We're just we have we're gonna have a bunch of call in people and um we didn't ask the members of Diversity One because we wanted, um, th- first of all, they're going through it right now. We didn't uh, want to put them on the spot. Um, we are going to um, hope to see some of them tomorrow. Um, but um, this is for you guys. You know, we're the few people that we were able to get a hold of. They um, they just have a few special words. The first person that, uh, and I'm going to say some things at the end. You know, I have a special t- story that I want to share about my history with Jamizi and how I met him before um, he was in D1, and I'll share that at the end. But the first caller that we're going to call is, we're going to call um, James from LRC. So we're going to try to get him on the line and um, see how that works. So while he's doing that, you know, oh, here we go. Hello. Hey, James, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Wow. Hang on. Okay. We can hear you loud and awesome. clear. So, James, I know that, um, so this is a special, this is not a numbered uh, podcast. This is a special edition for Jamizi. It's, um, it's, we're call, calling it um, episode J. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is going to be something we want you to just share a brief, uh, just a just a just a quick little story about how your thoughts and love for Jamizi and um, is there any of your other members there as well? No, uh, everybody's kind of gone home. Practice is over. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure if anyone was kind of straggling around, um, but um, you can go ahead and speak in their behalf. So go for it. This is your moment, and um, just two or three minutes, just a real quick, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Awesome! I can't wait. It every time. I saw Jamizi. It was a hug, and it, it, it was never just a handshake. It was an evolving handshake that turned into a full blown hug, and he genuinely meant it. I, I genuinely loved the man because he was just so full of life and, and so full of inspiration. He never had a negative word to say. If he said it to you, it was constructive. If he said it to you, it was meant to build you up. But you, you always had, it's like he was dead honest. If you asked him an honest question, you got an honest answer. He never blew smoke at anybody either. So his, believe me, his impact was, wow, wow. I learned so much from him and the rest of his band in Diversity of One. In fact, Anarchy Lace played our first show in 2015, 2016, was with Diversity of One, with Saving Able at the Boardwalk, which was a sold-out show. 
And that's where we first saw the power and the awesomeness of Jimmy's because they burnt that house down. And then we had to come in and play a couple of bands later. We played after them and they just, they rocked the planet. And then the next time we saw them was at Vetstock, the first one of 2017. And again, they tore the building down and made you have to follow them. But Jamezzi's impact is like, well, I don't, I don't know. There's a hole there. It's like, it's a permanent hole. It's too, it's too soon. It's almost a surreal. It's unreal. It's no, he's not. I I I'm, no, I'm, feel his presence. Uh, you know, 2023 hasn't been good, good to our community in, in the sense of what we've lost membership wise of, of fans. I mean, we lost Carol Stratton in January. She was a huge supporter of local metal and the hard rock scene. We lost Bonnie Calhoun in February another massive supporter of local music who put their money where their mouths went were and came out to shows on a regular basis, no matter where they were. Yeah. And then you lose somebody of the magnitude of Jamizi, who an act, an active working musician, one of us, a peer, a pillar, even something holding the ceiling up. Somebody of that magnitude is, is a Jamizi. And I, I did, I went to him quite a few times and we talked about stuff and just as friends, not necessarily musician to musician. It got around to that. But we always talk to each other like friend to friend. And yeah, I'm going to miss those. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss that. And yet, in my eyes, he's going to be one more shadow I see out of every show I go to. You're going to hear Jamizi's voice come out of somebody else. You're going to get a hug from somebody that's going to bring that back. You're going to hear somebody laugh and it'll be Jamizi's laugh. Yeah. It'll be coming out of somebody else yeah, and you'll well. feel his presence in the air. You know, the one thing I noticed cameraman Kev here, I, the one thing I noticed about Jamizi is when you get a Jamizi hug, you feel the love <laughs> yes, of the do. universe from him. You feel that love go through your whole body and you know, he's genuinely loves hugging you. Yes. I, I felt that every time, every time it wasn't just like, because you know how you shake hands with people, you know, and, and, and I mean, but a lot of us now see the one thing I've noticed that about all this is that we've started hugging each other more in our community. We started telling our fellow friends and musicians who are our colleagues, Hey, I love you. Take care. Drive careful. I hate to see it come at such a cost. Yeah. But I know that Jamizi, Jamizi would look at it and say, look, if, if, if I had something to do with the community, tightening up better and loving one another better, then, then I, I'm, I'm happy. He always strove, he strived for that. He wanted a better, more close knit, workable community for everybody. We talked about it. That's like, look, I, his, his philosophy is my own actually to, to, build our community so that we all lift each other up. He was like that. He, his light will look, his light will never go out. It'll be like one of those eternal candles. You know, you put something like that on his grave site, you have a flaming candle that the eternal flame, he was that eternal flame in my eyes. Yeah, he well, was an eternal flame. Definitely I'm, well I'm always going to think about that. You know, James, I really appreciate that. And we're going to, you know what, we're going to carry that momentum and we're going to keep rolling with this. And um, he's, he, we're going to do something big in the future. This is something that, we, you know, we don't know that we're, we have all these different ideas, but um, we're going to get with his family in the future and his bandmates, of course, and we'll do some kind of benefit ongoing. Thing. Yes, this is not, this I, is not a one-time memorial, say goodbye, we cry for a moment and then move on though. This is going to be something okay. that's going to continue. It should be something like a golf, not like. Pardon well, the, listen, the, we'll talk about that in the future, but yes. you know, yeah, it's going to be something big. It's going to be a multitude of things. And so I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something and we'll probably get together um, a whole bunch of people and, and let them, you know, throw a bunch of ideas in the hat and see what the gut, the band members um, have. But um, we're going to be going. So I just thank you so much. You are our first caller. Okay, we kicked you off and, you know, you kicked off our show tonight and um, we're going to oh. roll on into. And um, oh. we'll see you tomorrow.
Well, I look forward to it. We, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the boardwalk, and yep. we'll have an awesome evening. And I love you guys. We love and have you. a good love night. Love you too, James. That was James from LRC. Thanks, James. We'll talk to you soon. All righty. See you later. Bye. That was good. That was good. So we're gonna um, we're gonna add one other person, but I'll tell you that in a minute. We'll just roll it through in between. I'll, but let's just go. Let's try to get Casey on the line. Casey from you the know second. James also one of those guys that. I, I see it like all the shows just absolutely you know, like he's definitely a when I asked to do this he said absolutely you know and he's been you know he waited patiently for the call and I told him eight o'clock and then 8 30 and it was 8 40 so here we go okay give me one second and keep it rolling it's it's nice to hear things about the community and people that have that impact and you know, to lose somebody of that magnitude within the community um, who is trying to help everyone stand up and build something together, you know, it, it sucks. And, and it, 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 it's does, a realization Corey. of... Oh, it's so hard. We're all not here forever, so make sure, you know... You know, it's like that old cliche that only the good die young. Uh, Jamezy was definitely... Nothing but good, and nothing but love. He was an ambassador, though, for, you know, when people say, God, I wish Facebook was back the way it used to be. He literally said good morning, good night to everybody. He was that person, you know, in the algorithm, you know, we you'd look for his his um, Facebook and post. We got All right. <sighs> That's a lot. Um, yeah, this is hard. It's really hard. So, can you call? Um, can you call um, Dylan real quick? Just one. He's going to do a one minute. So I've got Jeremiah's number. Yeah, we're going to do Jeremiah in a minute. But can you and call Dylan's I also number? Got Star Cannon's number now. Too, okay. So, um, let me find Dylan's number and. Want me to give it to you? Or do you have it in your phone? We'll give him a ring. He has it in his phone. Yeah. No, I have it in his, in my phone. I mean, he is my stepson. Okay. You know. All right. So, uh, oh, here we go. What's up, guys? Hey, Dylan. Just real quick. Um, this is episode J for Jamizi. And you are our third caller, and it's just we just need one to two minutes of your time, and just just this is for his family, and this is a special podcast. So go. What did Jamizi mean to you? Yeah, I mean, you guys want me to just tell you what I think about the man? That's right. This is your this is your moment. When I was really young in my music career, Jamizi was he was you know really a pioneer in the region and it's kind of took a lot of us under his wing and offered mentorship and, you know, a specific perspective on what real diligence and drive is and what hard work and, and an actual work ethic is and, you know, what actually is cool and what isn't. Yeah. And, uh, I, had several conversations where we sat down at my kitchen table and, you know, aside from music, he offered fatherly advice. And as I was getting ready to have my first child, he offered wisdom. One of the things I, I remember specifically was, is, is having a daughter first. And he told me how it was going to change me as a man. And I'll tell you that Jamie's, he never lied. That's one thing he never did. Not around me, at least. I never saw the man lie. I never saw the man put anybody down. He was one of the most uplifting spirits, um, you know, and I know a lot of people believe in heaven, but I, I hope I hope his soul is reincarnated because <laughs> the world would be a much better place to have a soul as bright and fulfilling as his. And just knowing that I didn't get a chance to reconnect with him, knowing that he had taken some time to reach out through you guys to see how, you know, Brooke and I, my kid's mother and I have been. It just. 
The last conversation I had with him, Dylan, just two weeks ago, he asked, how's Dylan, how's my boy, and how's Brooke? Every time he's seen, I feel like, you know, he, he asked about you more than he, you know, known what I was doing. And he, so you, he was, you, were, you were top of his mind just two weeks ago. Yeah, and I, I just truly believe that's how he treated everybody. You yeah. know, he had that magnetic energy that people reciprocate around. And my heart goes out to his family. And I know we've all contributed the way we have. But just one of those reminders that, you know, it makes me feel a form of guilt for not contributing to his music endeavors and just participating in his life while he was here. And it's, it's, it's going to be an ongoing reminder to, you know, wake up feeling blessed that we are here today yeah. and that life is short and connect with those people, you know, that, that care for you, that make it easy for you to be in their life. So, um, you know, for anybody out there wondering who Jamie Z is or knew who he was, just know that he's the kind of person you want to be. He was the kind of person that you want to be. And I'll, I'll leave it with that. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon, son. I love you. Thank you for calling. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Love you. Okay, so... Um, we're just going to keep it rolling. The next person that um, we were going to call, if we're going to stay, it keeps going in order, is see if you can get Robert Tilly on the line. From Babylon we Gypsy. Got Robert from Babylon Gypsies. Coming up. Okay. Right here on Distorted Reality Podcast. So, wow, all this, like, uh, I think in between these, like, silent moments, I'm feeling his presence right now, and there's other people. If you see me not looking at the screen when you guys watch Hello, it's this, Robert. Oh, wow, it didn't even ring. Hey, Robert. Hello? Hey, Robert, this is Shell. How are you? Hey, how you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We're doing good, Robert. So you're you're one of our next callers. We're just keeping it roll. It, we're just rolling in call after call, and um, we just want you to just share a a, a minute or two on uh, what how the impact Jimmy Z had in your life, or maybe how you first met him. Just this is your time to say something about Jimmy Z. Oh man, he was such a great guy. I mean. <sighs> He was one of my favorite local performers. He just had so much energy and just so much honesty when he performed. And even off the stage, just talking to the guy, you know, he was just just really cool human being, and we're all going to miss him. Yeah. I mean, very big personality, and, ma'am, our, our hearts go out to, to his band, Destiny of One, you know, and to his family, and I remember the first time I seen him, I saw his son get up on stage and was up there just singing with his dad, rapping with his dad. And I mean, that was just awesome. I'm looking at a picture right now of his boy on the stage. Um, he played uh, many shows with his, his dad, which was really cool. I know a lot of shows with his dad. I mean, when it was like, you know, when it was permitted where, you know, if it was an all age situation or a family you know, local uh, community type of show. Exactly. So. Yeah. What a crushing blow to our little music family. Well, some of the things that people have been saying is that it's, you know, Jamezi's still with us and we're going to carry on his uh, legacy of love. And, um, you know, I think that um, Casey was saying earlier when she called, like, you know, just the best hugs ever. And, you know, so when we see each other, we need to say be present in that moment and take a moment and give each other a hello and a goodbye hug and in between hug and just, you know, not be such in a rush or be so yeah. bothered with the stupid shit. Right. You know, just like let's, exactly. let's just love each other. Let's just cut all our whatever petty problems we have in the scene and just love each other. Right, Corey? Enjoy the moments. Yep. Yeah, I think we all really need to kind of, you know, the Sacramento music community is pretty tight knit. And, um, you know, Reality Check has been loved and, and cherished, and we've loved and cherished a lot of the people that we work with. And we knew Jamezi actually before we even started doing Reality Check. 
And, you know, he was just literally one of the most positive people that I've ever met in my life. Oh, he was, he, he really was. He's just bigger than life. Yep. Are you going to be coming out tomorrow night? I don't know if you get an opportunity to go out with a bunch of us or meeting at the boardwalk. I don't know if you can make it with your schedule or anything like that, but, um, you know, it's going to be the first, um, toast that we do many to come. And I'm hoping that some of the, um, the brothers of, uh, diversity one will be there so we can just support them and love them. So yeah, I'm definitely going to make it out tomorrow night for that. Okay. I'll well, be there. Okay. Well, reality, this is distorted reality podcast, but, um, Rally Check, um, our our version of that is going to be out, and we're going to be doing some, in, you know, video interviews, and so we're hoping that we can get you on film because we want to do something special for his family. So, sure. So, Robert, let's continue this conversation tomorrow, and we just thank you so much for allowing us to call you so late at night and uh, be part of this. Well, thank you, and thanks for all you guys do for the community too. I mean, it's just our community, second to none. Yeah, there's yeah, there's agree. nothing better. We believe that for sure. Thank you, Robert. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, guys. You guys have a very good night. You bye too. bye. Bye bye. And that was Robert from Babylon Gypsies. Absolutely. So, you know, we have an order that we are going with. And so, um, you know, what's going Johnny called Ferguson. Did you do you have him up? Um Do you have I his number? Have, he texted it. I have Jeremiah. Okay, we got Jeremiah. Okay, maybe he's Johnny online. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Okay. You know, we all get kicked off of Facebook. Okay. <laughs> so that was Jeremiah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's Johnny. Okay, whatever. There we go. Okay. Oh. Mr. Jeremiah Ferguson. Hey, what's up, man? You are on Distorted Reality Podcast. Cool, cool. Edition, How you guys doing? Edition J for our loved one, Jamizi. We're doing, yes. we're doing good. I thought like I said ne- up next Johnny, and he's all Johnny. I'm like, well, that's his code word. I'm like, that's his no, that's, yeah. that's Jeremiah. Yeah, one one second, bro. Let me pull over real quick because I'm driving. Okay, cool. Okay, one second. <laughs> we gave you no warning. Hey guys, this is like we're doing this. You know, Corey, we're just doing okay, this raw. You know, Strong yeah. Cut. So, um. So this, so this is, is your all moment. Jamizi. This yeah. is all this so, is your um, moment. Talk for a minute or two, uh, how he impacted okay. your life or maybe a story how you met stories. him. Anything well, I'll tell you, you I'll tell you what. I I'm, I'm think Jamizi impacted everybody's life that he was around. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Dude was just an amazing person. Um uh, when I met him, he was it was we were doing the one knuckle riot thing and he was like uh, we started playing some shows together, you know, and and he just every time we played with them, they just they just killed it, you know, and I was like I don't know. Everything it's just his whole spirit, everything about the guy was just, you know, unique and uplifting and just it's just, it's just a horrible thing that he passed. It's horrible. You know, I mean, bad for the music scene, bad for everything, because he was just there's nobody like him. There was nobody like him out there. Right. There'll probably never be anybody again out there like him, you know. There's no there's no like, oh, you you remind me. No, there's it. He's just one and done, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. And we got to support his little. Um, we co- we we did the interview with him a couple when they did his um, music video, and um, yeah. I was just teasing. You know, I'm like, "What's your nickname?" He's all juicy, and then um, and then <laughs> we were like, "Oh, you know," and we were like, "Oh," and then his son were like, "Oh, a little juicy," you know. And so it just it's it's a funny yeah. time. Yeah. So, well, he was like, when, I remember he came to me one time and he said, "You know," he goes, "I don't I don't want." He kept joining me to, uh, you know, to get up like. To, Cause he didn't want me to quit playing, you know, or something. And he just was trying to keep trying to inspire me to keep playing. And I just didn't, I don't know, you know, that's Measy's band. So like, we, he's like, Ron, just come on. He's all, I'm a lion and I don't want to share the stage with the lions. You mean, but I want to share the stage with you, brother. I was like, that what to me was so huge. You know what I mean? Oh, it's so crazy. He was that sucks. guy. I mean, he, yeah. I think he inspired a lot of people, Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes in different scenes, there's drama. And yeah, he he didn't even know the meaning of the word, man. No, he right? Didn't. He really, <laughs> he really real. didn't. That is true. Yeah, yes, he was always positive and and uplifting, yeah. and that was cool to see you guys at that at that old Ironside show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, cool. did anyone see you film back it? up on stage, man? Yeah, I did well, I saw you, his you camera see. crew there, so I I know he had some people filming his person that does a video. I hope that maybe there was some kind of vi- footage of you. Right. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I just uh, we were supposed to do another 
song too that that um assassin wrote and it's just a man badass song and it just it just sucks that we're going to be able to do it you know i mean but i mean i just wanted to say that you know he's going to be missed and he was loved throughout the whole music scene and we I, I just it's a horrible day that he passed and i wish the best for his family and everybody you know he's a beautiful person and it's just a horrible loss thank you so, so much yeah, i for think it's up to us to kind of keep keep you know, keep, memory, keep that you know. going one way yeah. or another, you know, it's right. It's, it's, it's all of our responsibility because yeah. he was absolutely loved by the music community. Yeah. Yeah. And, there, and so there's nobody else out there with that message that he had. And it's like really needed right now for real. Yeah. So we're all going to take agree. a we're all going to take a piece of that. And um, I hope that yeah. you do that song that you didn't get to do. OK, whether it's Thank acoustic you. level or <laughs> no, you know, it was it was it was metal. It's assassin wrote it. It okay. was really cool. OK, yeah, well, so. you know what? Somehow you're going to do it in the future. OK, right. And, you know, we'll <laughs> okay. um, we're just going to we'll 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 have a picture of Jamezy out there and we'll we'll figure okay. out the technology and. You know, yeah. we do have a hologram machine. We do oh, ha- actually. Awesome. We actually have a hologram machine, but we'll talk about that at another time. Yeah. And so, um, who knows what I'm we like, can do? We'll do big things. I want things. to tell the the rest of his band too that I love them, and I'm sorry for their loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just all right, you guys. We love you. Thanks for your time, all and right, we'll love you too. You. Thank you we'll for having you me on, you guys. Of course, love uh, you, brother. absolutely. Okay, love you too, bro. Bye. All right. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Um. That was a that was a treat to get to see Jeremiah play with Jamezy. Yeah, I think now, I mean, it, it was special, you know, like he said, when a lion shares a stage, you know, with another lion like that, and I think now it, it, that's literally an irreplaceable, um, you know, thing Moment. that happened that night. So you know, we're gonna yeah. move along. Here. We're just gonna keep rolling. So and, we can um, go. We can get some of the other people that text in because I mean I'm gonna. We have. Uh, I have Star Cannon's number. Okay. Well, let let's try to call Star, and then I'm gonna text uh, Chris. Uh, All um, right. We're Rodardi. gonna we're gonna try to call Star right now. Definitely sounds like a lot more people in the Sacramento community need to step up and bring the love, and uh, you know the support that one person brought to the community. Did we get you, Star? Um, this is Casey again. Oh, oh, sorry, he called- Casey. <laughs> hey, Casey. No, you know we'll just go with it. Casey, we just had Jeremiah on the phone. Okay, it was great. You know, he had to pull over on the side of the road to talk to us. It was oh, awesome. Good. I'm glad you guys got a hold of him. Yeah, we did. It was so cool. He was like, t- and it was like, so we were talking to somebody else, and I'm like e- messaging him, and I'm like, looks like I'm not even paying attention <laughs> to their words. I'm like, I'm just like looking down. He's like, like let me pull over. Yeah. So it was really awesome. Aww. So okay, so we got Star next. We're just getting our, you know, hey guys, this is raw and uncut. So um, love you, and Casey. There's a lot of people writing. In right now, so yeah. you know. So Bye. I, guess, I guess you needed to call again. <laughs> Bye. We'll, we'll talk soon. <laughs> okay. So do you need it? Do you want us to help you out there, it, Kev? It's on here, but it's not a link. So let's you gotta move type it along. Go to just go to Christopher. Um, you can call along. Chris Rodardi. Um, I thought Shane was gonna be. No, next. we're not doing Shane right now. He's working, so we'll just we'll get Shane. You know, before Stevie. So we could just, uh, Chris is available right now. All right. And here we go with Chris R. Chris Rodarty from Hellraiser Clothing. Hello. Hey, Chris. What's up? Hey, what's up? How's so, it going, sir? So we, here we, we are. We got you on the, the Jamezy uh, podcast right now. Yeah, it's episode awesome. Jamezy. And um, basically, yeah. you know, um, you know, AJ, um, she wasn't able to call, but she um, shared something online earlier today about the first, uh, she delivered a Hellraiser t-shirt back in the day. And that was kind of mm-hmm. like her first contact. And, um, you know, maybe you talk about, I know, I didn't diversity one play at the Hellraiser house before back in the day? Yeah, they did actually. They played at, uh, I, I think it was 2019 at the, it was kind of like, it was the grand opening of the, the store when I first put the, the store part in before I built the office and the right. separation of the workspace. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so he just, he, he, we'd always kind of just, we when linked up at a bunch of different places and gave him some gear and some hats here and there and uh, just kind of hit it off. And it was kind of cool, man. He was just a really cool, you know, high spirited person. And 
It seemed like he always got along with everyone, so. That's the theme, Chris, you know, and you, the theme of Hellraiser is always betterment, right? And there's a huge yeah. hole in the music community. And how do you feel, feel this hole? Because he was, um, what everyone's been saying, he's, was unlike anybody. Okay. There's nobody that's going to be like, oh, you're Jamizi, you know, number two. No. And so what I think we all have to do as a community is come together and, um, be positive. He was that guy that posted every day or at least a couple uh -huh. times a week to say, how's your day going, you know, and then just yeah, kind of yeah. get this conversation started. So maybe we can, each one of us do our part to carry on that torch, right? Maybe Hell Yeah, can and, it, and it, for me, it went a little much, you know, I, I wrote the, the, you know, post personally on my on my page and on our Hellraiser page, and it kind of just stuck with me the rest of the day. It just resonated too, just how I felt about it, because it was, it was hit so close to home. And I haven't had something like that, you know, like this happen in a long time that hit so close to home. Yeah. So it kind of made me re re question things and, you know, just be positive and be, you know, uh, you know, pray for their their family and good thoughts for them and positive energy towards them. And I, I hope I wish everything well. So. Yeah, we're all going to kind of meet together and have a, um, you know, have a yeah, but tomorrow's going to be tomorrow. great though. Are you going to come yeah. out to the boardwalk? Yep, I'm going to be there. Definitely okay. going to be there. We're going to be there about you know about seven o'clock, and um, we're going to have the our camera out, and there's a couple other people that are going to come out and have their cameras and different things, and we're just going to document some stuff for the family and um, try to make some kind of a impact and talk to some of the boys in um, diversity of one because you know we didn't yeah. try to get them on today because it would be too much. You know we're yeah. we're doing yeah. this for them. We're letting them know that. Um, you know, they're loved and they're supported and um, we're here for yeah. Jim Easy's family. 100% so. support and love and all that to, to the family and everyone. Well, we thank you for being able to answer the phone. We appreciated it. We couldn't do a show without having uh, Chris Rodarte from Hellraiser uh, Clothing, you know, right? Right, Corey? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for letting me call in. Thanks for calling me in. Yeah, so um, definitely say hello to Tiffany because I know that Tiffany uh, knew Jamizi as well. And I'm glad you guys were at that last show. See, there was a reason why you guys came yeah, out we, and we stayed up past your bedtime. <laughs> that's one of those things, too, because that was actually the last memory I had when we went to go see uh, Killed by a Dolphin at the Battle of the Bands. And, uh, man, it was just like when you walked in, it was just that presence. It was cool. You know, it was just like... You'd say hi to him, and it was just bam, lit up, you know, yep. like Christmas tree. So it was, it was definitely going to have some good times that we're going to be able to reminisce on. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks for your time, yep. Chris, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Take care. We love you. See you yeah. tomorrow. Love you, man. Take care, sir. All right, love you guys. All right, see Bye. you. Okay, did you get the f numbers figured out for Star Cannon? I do, and I don't have this in the phone, so I'm. Going to dial it. All right, right we're going to dial it raw. And we should be ringing here. Yeah, this little sound effect. Star, star cannon corner. from the Star Cannon. Hey, hey, man. This might be the first no answer. Hello. Hey, girl. Hey. Star. Hey, this is Michelle. This is Michelle, and we have Corey here, and we How's have Kevin, and um, this is our special episode. It's called Episode J for Jamizi. Right, we, right. We couldn't even give it a number. There's no way he has. He stands alone, and um, you know the people that have called that we've called so far. They just took a minute or two and gave a story um, about how Jamizi impacted your life. And so this is your moment. So please share whatever you want to share because um, this is for him and his family. And I know he's listening. Well, I, I know I'm going to echo probably what everyone else has said, how positive this guy was, how welcoming he was. Um, even if you didn't know him really well, he treated you like family, you know, gave you the big hug and the big smile. Um, the thing I'm uh, most sad about, uh, separate from his passing, is every time he would see me, he'd say, Star, we got to do something. We got to do something, you know, with regard to some collaboration. So my heart breaks because, you know, that opportunity is is missed. But um, that's just how he was. He was just always let's connect and, 
and um and and do something bigger and better than we are and and he was uh bigger and better than all of us are so super sad for our music community and especially for diversity of one um you know sacramento mains a metal um knew of his passing early on uh in the morning yesterday and wanted to give his family and his bandmates an opportunity to express and pose before we did, but um, we were all feeling it pretty heavy uh, yesterday, early morning, and um, and still feeling it today. On Sunday, yeah. 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 Oh, it, it's just, it's it's still unreal. It's, it's um, you know, to... It's kind of daunting. It's daunting that he passed away on Easter, you know, Easter Sunday, and... Um, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing it's a hard thing to realize you know when you said that you were gonna do some kind of collaboration I just my first thought um, because you are uh, um, you know you're one of my favorite singers in the in the local community I just I love you and, thank you uh, and um, I don't know I just no pressure but I just feel like you could write a song you know I just I don't know I, I just feel like you have a song in you and that might have a verse or two regarding him so I don't know. I just no, it it, it, it it did cross my mind. It it definitely did. Um, me personally, I've had a lot of loss these these last handful of months, uh, and with your father it, passing, and well, it started with my dad and and a lot of different friends and family, yeah. and um, you know, the rest of the girls uh, in Sacramento, Maine, and Metal were were shedding tears and feeling it pretty hard. I, I'm a bit numb right now, um, and and have been you know, over the last couple of passings of friends, but, uh, being numb, but still being aware of the passing and the impact, um, is still very evident. Yeah, that's well said. It's, yeah, it's, it's this a one lot. was very hard. Um, well, we didn't know. Make well, sense. Yeah. We, we met Jamizi before we even started doing reality check when I was actually doing music and I had a pro tool studio and he showed up with our son to collaborate on some rap music and stuff. And so, I mean, we even knew him before we even started doing the show up here. And for us, it was like losing a family member, you know, kind of like it was for you guys, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have definitely don't have as many years under my belt knowing him. But like I said, his impact and his um, personability... Um, is impactful. You know, I've, I've seen many posts on Facebook from different friends and they're all kind of saying the same thing, just how positive the guy was. And it didn't matter if he, if he knew you forever or, or a few minutes. I was just uh, going to say that star. It, I was just say, you know what? It did not matter. He gave you the same energy from hello yeah. or it, whether you grew up and you were his child, his uh, your sibling, uh, son, or I just met you today. It, you felt it. And I, I used to watch, I was, I'm a watcher. And, um, I just remember watching him just, give you straight moment. You got a, you, when you had a hug from him, you had a moment from him. It wasn't like he was looking on to the next, he was giving you what he had right then. And, That's uh, absolute truth. Absolute truth. You, you had the moment, um, and it was your moment and he gave you that undivided attention, even if it was for just a moment, but it was very truthful. Yep. Very, definitely very truthful. Yeah. Well, he was one of the few people that when he gave you a hug, you could feel the love. Yeah. Yeah. No fake in his game. No. No fake in his game at all. No. No air hug for sure. Are you going to be able to make it out tomorrow to the boardwalk? I know there's a handful of the maidens that are coming. I'm. I'm. I'm going to talk to Chris, and we're going to we're going to see what our day looks like. Um, you know, I've got a couple shows coming up, and and a couple events coming up that I need to get ready for. But um, you know, it's a school night, so that's always a challenge. But you know, the first uh, night though, you know, I mean, there's going to be many, many. It's not even the memorial yet. There's going to be so absolutely, many in the future, absolutely. So. so, so it may be uh, uh, a necessary appearance from your diva, Star Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> we That's love you so we much. <laughs> We're so happy that you were able to get that. Um, I'm glad uh, we got the phone number on hand, and of course, you know we have it in the phone, but it, we needed it like quick to Kevin's phone. And we thank you so much for your time. So you be part of our special. Uh, Jay Jamizi episode of Distorted Reality. So we'll talk soon, Star. We I pre you. I appreciate the reach out, and you guys take care too. I know it's a huge loss for you guys as well, and 
my heart condolences go out to you as well. Thank you. Have a good night, you guys. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And with that, it's time for us to take a break. Okay, we'll be right back. We're back. Uh, And we're back. And um, we're going to take a couple more calls. Um, It's been a rough night. Yeah, it's been rough. I we literally had to take a break because it was just listening to everybody. Just, I feel like it just I I, I sucked in all their um, motions and stuff like that. I'm an I'm an empath. I'm definitely somebody that um, feels deeply, and um, I'll have my moment and I'll share my little thing that I wanted to say regarding him. But right now we're gonna try to get a hold of uh, Shane Farmer. I'm not sure he's at work. We're gonna try to call his number. If he doesn't answer, we're gonna call um, OG Stevie Hellraiser. He gets one more ring and we hang up on him. Please leave your. Okay. All right. So, you know, that happens. We tried. We're going to call Stevie. We're going to call OG. Yeah, he'll try to call back while we're talking to. Of course he will. Maybe it's past his bedtime. No, he was at work. He was doing some kind of work. So, so we'll get Stevie. Stevie has a story um, to share. Um, He was trying to tell me last night and I told him no I want to hear it live on the radio and um it was, it was it's it was pretty cool because you know he had his little moments with different people and I think he's in Montana so it's a little bit later hello hey Stevie wow turn off hey. your, turn off so your background have an you gotta turn hey. TV down I can hear you guys we, yeah, but we're 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 re- on the podcast right now, and we're recording. And um, you are our last guest. I'm sorry for calling so late, but um, we uh, want to hear. This is episode Jamizi. It was episode Jamizi. J, no number involved. He gets his own episode. And Secor Corey's here, and I'm here, and Kev's here, and we just want to hear um, how um, Jamizi impacted your life, and how you were able to share parts of your life with him. Well, yeah, um, Hellraiser down, right? Um, we lost another uh, good guy out there in the music industry. Yeah, I, I um, I um, I met Jimmy Z. I think it was in 2016. I met him. I was uh, I was hanging out with the guys on White Knuckle Riot, and they had a they had a show in downtown uh, or uh, at the Cow Palace in San Francisco at a tattoo artist convention, and that's where I met uh, D1. Actually, I I, I was going to meet D1. Eventually, because uh, Casey inked up was actually in our shop at the Hellraiser uh, clothing shop, and yeah, he wanted me to come down and, and hang out with those guys because he was in he was a drummer for D One. Okay. And uh, he said, "You got to come out and meet Jimmy. This guy's a cool dude." And uh, I finally I finally did through uh, White Knuckle Riot, and um, we formed a, a, for, a friendship like uh, we like we normally do with the with the with the bands out there in the in that, uh, entertainment community, and. Um, he was a really good dude. I'm a good rapper. Uh, we uh, we went back and forth on some of the songs. I wanted them to do a Hellraiser um, song and and uh, Bruss and and uh, he's just a really cool guy. And um, I had a uh, I had a, a couple friends that I've I, I've met out in the field. They were doing some rap artists, which I turned on to them to a Jimmy uh, Z. And um, the guy just was uh, wanted to help everybody, you know. In uh, in 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 that uh, community, and man, I, I'm I'm really bummed. I'm thinking I miss the guy, man. Um, he did stuff for Hellraiser, and we did stuff for vice versa. You know, they played at the, they played at a, at a shop, a couple of events we had. Um, man, I'm I'm just really bummed. Um, I think like everybody else, uh, he's one of the, I as far as I was was concerned at at the time, uh, there D1 was uh, Sacramento was one of the, one of the best bands. <clears throat> in the in the area, yeah, a lot of and, energy, um, a lot of energy, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. And um, stage presence was stage presence was awesome. Um, just just awesome how they um, projected themselves. 
And, um, you know, like I said, Hellraiser down. We miss, we're going to miss another one. We are. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that we were talking about, Stevie, earlier, we, we were talking to um, your son, Chris, and, um, we were, you know, how there, Jamizi had such a presence. And, um, you know, how he'd make his postings on Facebook and just be like, you know, hello, have a good day, or what's up, you know, and, and then he would just kind of get the conversation started, and, um, you know, we, we all have a different part in the community, and he was a the really good hugger, and he um, made people feel comfortable, and no matter if you knew him five minutes, or you knew him for years, you know, and you're one of the ones that knew him for several years, and so I think that we can keep his light alive by, um, by just continuing that, you know, just being um, the best version of ourself and looking for the good in people. And I think that he brought that out. You shared something earlier, um, and I don't know if you can share it, but, you know, just how spirit, you know, just kind of like the, that anointing spiritual moment, you know. And I don't know if you want to share that or we'll just leave it at what you already said. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually choked up. Okay. So I get it. I'm, uh, I, I, would, I, I was, I, I knew you guys were going to call, so I kind of was kind of prepared to it, and I didn't realize it was going to hit me. And always, you know, you never know. You never know when it when it does, but no, you're right. Yeah. But you know what? You just think about that because we're going to have many more conversations. Demizi's, um, this is not the only time we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to there's going to be multiple things in the future, and um, so we um, definitely appreciate you answering the call because we <coughs> couldn't end the show with anybody better than from one OG to another OG, and and Jamizi was one of a kind, and so are you, Stevie. And um, well, that's why we really, wanted you to um, take us um, with our final call. I really, uh, I really appreciate that, and uh, I want to, <clears throat> you know, it took a it 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 didn't take a lot to um to uh, make good friends with him, and it was pretty easy. And um, I have to I have to give kudos to um um AKA alias J AJ shoot shooty for um yeah. being my partner back then and helping and bringing him to Hellraiser also uh, Shane Farmer bringing him in and and um you know I it, it like I said it's a, that team effort and uh he's part of our team honestly um yeah we, we're, he's we gonna be missed. he's Shane, gonna be missed. we called Shane before you and, and fucking <laughs> oh, didn't answer, answer the phone but you know what he's here in spirit <laughs> he's, he's working <laughs> but he was classic <laughs> Shane right he's all hey I want to do this and then he didn't answer his phone but but that's okay yeah. <laughs> he still was like there. <laughs> I want to do this but you know I'm working and I can't answer the phone so oh <laughs> oh yeah 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 I guess that's something to do so, no, um, but, no um, he did, but um, but yeah. yeah. So um, we'll continue this conversation, and we're so happy that you are part of history here in Sacramento community, and it's definitely a Hellraiser down moment. It's definitely, definitely a Hellraiser, a Hellraiser down. down. Yeah. Definitely. So, All right, you guys. Um, a shout out to um, distorted no no uh, <laughs> sorry distorted reality check <laughs> distorted reality and, podcast. You got that right. Yeah, and um. I appreciate you guys, and thank you guys. And a shout-out to Hellraiser Clothing as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love you. I'll talk to you later. Call love you guys. Bye. Have a, all right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you, too, guys. Bye-bye. So I just had um, a James Jameson from Kill by a Dolphin. He texts me. Um, he, 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 um, he sends his love. And uh, before I go into what I wanted to say, um, Wendy, um, she, she – I'm going to see if we can, um, oh, did I send you the text so you can play it, Kevin? Is that how it works? If I send you the text, the copy, if and you then... send me the, yeah, yeah, if you send me the audio file, by forward text, it to him. I okay. can play it. Let's see. How do I do that forward? Okay. And I'm going to send it to you. As shall learns how to work her phone. Okay, so, oh, yeah, um, right. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, Go it's ahead. okay. She's always on it. She should <laughs> definitely okay, know how I to work it. Okay, I sent it to you. It, it, was it, it is something that, you know, loss, you know, just tremendously hits you. And, you know, even, like, in my case, you know, I didn't know the guy that well. But no, like, but do you feel like you got to know him a little bit tonight? Yeah. It sounds, yeah. you know, the few conversations I had with him, um, you know, this solidifies that, you know, what he was saying to me, you know, was genuine 
and you know he was a real stand up guy, and just wanted the community in the music scene, regardless whatever genre of music, just wanted the community to come together and love each other and just all basically lift each other up and thrive because you know what was good for one person helped out everybody yeah jamizi really yeah. kind of was that guy i mean he just like i mean from the first day we met him you know through our son dylan and this was even like i said you know earlier this was before we were doing reality check it was in um the, the when i went back to it was it was 2013 because we started reality check in 2012 as far as when we started filming and we did miss it. We missed an opportunity to film him and Dylan on stage at Ace of Spades on 2015, but we met him probably 2011, 11 or 12. Yeah. And that, at that time, um, I had a, you know, recording studio pro tools type thing. And, um, I remember Dylan calling me up and going, Hey Kev, you know, can me and my friends come in and we're going to collaborate on an album and everything. And Jamizi was one of the guys that came in there and, um, you know, he just looked at me and he was like, you know, you're a really cool dad, you know, for, you know, recording your son, you know, your son's rap music and stuff like that. And, and, um, you know, I, I said, you know, well, I'm actually Dylan's stepdad. And he said, that don't matter, Kev. He, he goes, you're an amazing guy, you know, to, take part in your son's life like that and stuff like that. And he thanked me like multiple times and stuff. And I just thought to myself, wow, this guy, man, you know, he's really genuine because we did have some people in there, you know, that, you know, thanked us. And the, but then you could tell that they weren't really grateful. But with Jamizi, it was an honest, heartfelt thank you for what you're doing, there was you're an amazing it. guy, yeah. and coming from somebody like that, that was an amazing dad himself, yeah, it really stuck with me, and it really, it just made me feel like, you know, just appreciate, I appreciated him, because of the, the genuine love, and, you know, like I said earlier, many times, you know, when that guy gave you a hug, you could feel the love flowing through your body he was the love from the universe you, yep. you know from him just was like you. it's that's something that i i just honestly i i mean there's a lot of people that love and appreciate us and stuff like that and a lot of people show their appreciation for us in many ways but i don't think anybody is ever gonna give that feeling to me again and it's gonna be something very hard for me to deal with thanks kevin so why don't you play that message from um, Wendy, okay? Did you get it on Messenger? I think I sent it to you. And yeah, and you're kind of and you're kind of clicking over there. Just to, you know, I know that you're emotional, but you're shaking the desk. Little little beep beep. So while he's getting in that message there, um, we're gonna play it from Wendy, and yeah, then it's is not it, no. You just hearted it. it. Yeah, but it's not playing. I'm playing it. Yeah. Do you have to turn your volume up on your phone? We're providing a platform for expression and for always being a huge support to our music community, and especially right now. As you know, we are all completely in shock and devastated to learn of Jamezi McGuire's passing. Our heartfelt condolences go out to his family, Little Maisie, and of course to the diversity of one band and D1 Army. We are a fucking army, and that will continue. Jamezi will forever be in our hearts. We will never forget him. And I feel so blessed to have known him. And I'm so thankful for all the shows, all the great music, all the friendship, all the love that um, that he brought to all of us. And as soon as he walked into a room, he was a, an amazing soul. We all know that. And um, he will be greatly missed. 
Thank you again for all you do, for all your love and support. Jamezi always said, love is key. And I hope that we can all continue to take that message forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. That was beautiful. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up. I just want to... Um, you just I, say what you need to say. Yep, I'm going to end the show with my little words. Um, okay, Producer Kev, so when I'm done talking, just ready to just close the show out. Um, you know, I just... I got the opportunity to say I was sorry to Jim Easy the last time I saw him. You know, I... Um, he came up to me. He saw Shell. Where have you been? And um, you know, I had this look on my face, and I'm all, you know, I've been around. He said, "But where have you been?" I said, "You know, I've just kind of been off grid." And um, he said, "Are we okay?" And I said, "Yeah, we're okay." And I gave him a hug, and he gave me a hug, and he was um, talking to Kevin about you know some stuff that they talked about, and um, we're talking about the music, of course, and. Um, I just told him that I was sorry that I went away, you know, because like we've said multiple times and with my son, uh, Dylan, I didn't see Jamezi for several years because he did music with my son for a few years. And then, and then I didn't see him like maybe a, a couple years. We weren't on, we weren't always online friends. And the thing about Facebook is that just because you're not, just because you're not friends on Facebook doesn't mean that you, the love changes, doesn't mean that you're not friends in real life. And I think that it's really important to know that um, sometimes um, with people like me, I go on Facebook with you and I go off Facebook with you, but I, um, but it, my feelings for you don't change. It's just that sometimes I um, handle things in a different way. And so there was years where I didn't know where Jimmy Z was because we lost contact. And I remember I saw him again at the Hellraiser um, function that they were talking about in 2015. And he um, came out and the first thing he said was, he's all, Mom, Michelle, wait. And he just came running to me. And honestly, I didn't really even recognize him for a second until he said, it's Jimmy Z. And I'm like, because I had met so many of Dylan's friends. And so it was like, so I had an impact, but you know, I hadn't seen him for a little while. So it took me a second. And then it was like, Oh yeah, how could I forget you? And, um, he just started asking about what was going on with Dylan. And at the time Dylan was going through a really hard time and he was able to just kind of have me focus in on, um, the realness of my son and telling him, you know, I love him and make sure you let him know where I am. And I told him that you, this is when my son was living off grid and he wasn't on social media. And so I remember telling Dylan about that. And, um, and then, you know, then we started our relationship over again and I would see him at shows and we had the opportunity to, um, film him multiple times and, um, had a really cool thing at the uh, brewery when we did, um, actually our very first live podcast, um, uh, we yep. did interview he was with there them. and he, all, all of member, them band members that were there. That was really that us. was really cool, and they were advertising their future video, their very yeah. first video, and so we have that memory for you guys, and that was really kind of cool. And we had some shenanigans out there, and we were eating the food and drinking, and and um, we were able to go to his video, um, the video shoot, which was a few weeks later. Yep, and that was fun, and um, you know, just kind of follow their journey up until when we saw him right before, and so I'm grateful, Corey. Um, you know, I don't want to live in guilt like, oh, I could have had more times with you. I've had enough good times and I had a, I was able to have closure. I was able to tell him, I'm sorry that, um, I went away from your smile for a little while and I was able to give him a hug and, you know, just love on him. And I was able to take a really cool picture of Kevin and him and another one of the band members. What was the gentleman's that, name? That was D1, uh, assassin. D1 Assassin. Okay, so I'm sorry. I don't know all you guys' uh, stage names. Um, but I'm, I'm happy about that. So this has been a really emotional ride, and it's just the beginning. We're going to be at the boardwalk tomorrow, and we're going to uh, start that journey with Toast to the Guys. Each one of you guys, I just want you to know that Reality Check TV, moving forward from here, we are here for you, and we're going to support you guys as a community, and we're going to keep uh, Jimmy Z's uh, legacy alive for his children and for his 
his um, his wife and his family that um, he has. And thanks so much, Corey, for being, um, you know, just kind of like we dominated the show a little bit, you know, but you're just a, such a solid presence. And I'm just so glad that you helped me in between the, you know, when we, we took our own little break and had to like get it together. And because I wanted to be able to say that I wanted to say my truth because you know what? Jimmy Z was honest. Okay. And he never lied. And he looked you straight in the face. And he so was genuine. he was genuine. So we just want to tell you, we love you. And this is episode J for Jamizi and, um, peace out. We'll see you next time. And Jamizi, I'm unbelievably honored that you honored reality check TV at the end of your last music video. And I just want to say rest in paradise, my brother. Hey everybody, this is Shane. Just wanted to say a couple of words about Brother Jamizi. You know, I like to call him Big Jam. Jamizi Pleasy. But we all know that he was a blessed soul that brought so much love and light to the world. You know, he was a light of lights and such a dark world at times. Just wanted to say that he's going to be missed and I'm going to see him on the other side. I just wanted to say that the most important thing to me was my birthday was Easter, April 9th, about 1041 in the morning. He sent me a big happy birthday wish. We had exchanged little words and said that we loved each other, missed each other, and how important it was to tell the people that you love how you feel. I'm going to miss him. I missed hanging out with him, shows, D1, Hellraiser. <sighs> Said I wasn't going to choked up, but hey, <sighs> I just want to um, recognize and, and send some love to his family, his cousin, cousins, Audrey, Jacqueline, Darius, um, you know, especially his children, you know, Jordan and Jordan. Aiden, Julius, Jamel Jr., a.k.a. Mel Mel, Jersey, and um, just his whole family. Of course, D1 family, Michael, Mike, Dave, Dead Eyes. So, anyway, that's all I have to say at this point, but hopefully we'll all see you tomorrow and the upcoming events to celebrate his life. God bless. Thank you.